so this video is called um, Countries Are Bullshit and it's basically the idea that like um, like countries are like these kind of like large cults that we subscribe to um, we all know that countries are like concepts and they're not like a, a natural thing necessarily um, they're more of a kind of well, they might be like natural as an extension of human social systems, but they're not natural in the sense of like a leaf or something like that. It doesn't exist ex outside of our mind. So, with that in mind, countries are bullshit. Um, into superpower war and conflict is somewhat of a lie. Um, America and China and Russia aren't against each other. They're not. They're not. They may compete, but they compete within certain rules of engagement, just like a sports team, just like rival sports teams will compete, just like Manchester United and Liverpool FC hate each other, the fans hate each other, but on the pitch, the players, um, the players sort of in this metaphor would be like the politicians, they don't stab each other and they look after each other's interests because if they were to attack each other and stab each other then that would be working outside the rules of the game and uh, there would be a mutual disinterest in that. So it's really important to understand like there's mutual interest within these superpower countries and the narrative that they're kind of enemies and against each other and all Putin and uh, the, the, the Chinese Socialist Party, no, they're, they're very much in cahoots and that makes sense. Um, that being said, they'll, they'll still compete, I'm sure, and they'll still fight proxy wars, potentially. Um, but <clears throat> they're not formally against each other, or at least there's strong rules of engagement to protect mutual interests. And borders, countries are kind of almost like, like it's kind of a way to control trade. What you'll notice is that trade is the trade is the kind of like the base value system in a way, um, being able to trade your goods. Before, when, when we, when, uh, before sort of capitalism, when things, and before like public education um, sort of manifested, we, we saw uh, skill-based economies where skills were passed down from generation to gener generation, artisanship, mastery of craft, um, and these skills would be protected within the families um, and this kind of leads into masonry a little bit as well like the protection of skills to, to retain the value because it's very important to retain value um, in those days because the more your skill is um, freely available the less valuable it is and the less valuable you are so borders control trade Politicians and their trade policies create um, create trade monopolies, which is what you see with things that now it's like, oh, we're having this. We decide how much you can bring in, how much it is, because they're controlling certain value systems within their country. Now, I'm not making a case for borderless society or anything like that. I just think free if. People always say like free trade, free market capitalism and all this and it's just a little bo bollocks, really. It just means like free for us to choose, not for you to choose. You know, you'll pay taxes on that, you'll give us a chunk of that. It's very mafia. It's no different from uh, extortion, really, when you look at it. It's, you know, like India, for example, where I am now, you can't import anything into India without paying like... 50%, sometimes 100% tax on that item. And I guess, in a way, it might be considered clever because that, that will, um, that gives you a kind of, um, it gives you a kind of benefit with like, they'll say it's like, oh, increases Indian bought things, but of course, that will be lobbied by the Indian manufacturers and all. And the, the problem, oh, I've got nothing wrong with that, but it's kind of like hierarchies built on hierarchies, you know, like, all of these industries are monopolized anyway. Like, no one can just start up a, a business and start building cars and stuff. And the crazy thing is, is as, we, as technology advances and, we, and the consumer becomes more and more out of touch with the product, 
the consumer just becomes less and less valuable on the whole. And this is my worry with AI as well, is that it just devalues humanity. Now, young countries like Australia, for example, there's such a lot, I spent a year in Australia, there's such a large marketing campaign uh, to promote the idea of Australia. There's flags everywhere. All, every advert's like, prime, 100% prime Aussie beef, beef. Like it's, it's almost like you can tell that they're selling it. They're selling an idea as much as they're like, because the country's not old enough, you know, the remnants is there. The past is not too far enough gone to know that it was stolen from people. You know, the land has been taken and uh, this new kind of system has been installed there, which is colonialism. Uh, which obviously, India is a massive example of this as well. Um, <clears throat> these kind of federal kind of governments, these overarching power structures that want to create these like states, like oh, they kind of want to do in Europe as well. These these like centralizing uh, entities are a bad thing, in my opinion. I'm all for the decentralization of a lot of things. Um, whether that means we have to take a step back in terms of technology, I think it's worth it because I think human value is at the end of the day at stake and our convenience is not as important as our value because in the face of tyranny, our value is extremely important. It's the only thing keeping us from being loaded onto trains. And if you think that's a, you know, if you think that's an extreme thing to say, then I, I, you know, I think you should look at history. We are in a small bubble of kind of peace at the moment in the West, you know, and, and, all, and all around, like, it's always been a, it's always been imposition on people, uh, it's always been that way, you know, like, peasantry and, and all of this, and it's funny because it, I don't want to seem to, I, I don't want to seem too cynical the way I'm coming across because a lot of is seemingly a lot of positive things have come from you know the wild like we have this kind of like level of education now which is somewhat like uh, good for you know it's it's the standard of life is good in the West it's good but at the same time it's like it's at this cost of like we, we, we measure the standard of life by convenience not by our ability to like so not by our ability to self-determinate and I think the idea of countries is kind of like a cult within all of this idea because countries like I I have no relation to my to the ancestors of my land and I have this cultural identity which is you know we can bond over things like you know, like isms and, and schisms and all of these little cultural memes that kind of make us bond but for me, that's as far as it goes. Like, they don't speak for me. You know, we both cheer when, we both cheered when Rooney scored, but the, that's, even that, I'm kind of a little bit, I feel it's like a little bit sickening sometimes. Um, for me, it's representative of like the Hunger Games. It's so obvious that in society we have these tears because people don't understand that like value is, and value isn't money. Value is like economy is is, um, is material goods, it's uh, minerals, it's um, you know it's all of these things that we need to survive, and all of these conveniences and these sort of frivolous things also that we've built from the minerals and everything. That was this old money is built on the back of slavery because these minerals are extremely hard to extract. They take manpower, and if you pay all the men fairly, then the value's not been extracted, right? Like, there's no even share of this. It's all built on the back of slavery from time immemorial because this, you know, all of this gold, for example, all of this steel, all of this stuff that was, is transformed over time into things, into technology, into like diggers to build it up better, but, I used to be quite techno-optimistic in terms of like the way the world was going because I thought, well, maybe AI can, um, maybe we'll get to a point where like all the mining and all the shit jobs can be done by artificial intelligence and robotics. 
and then somehow that value can be shared um, equally or somehow we can have access to it like it, it will become cheap to live so thereby you won't have to work so hard to to um, to attain things but what are you attaining are you just attaining convenience like does that fit in with like how humans attain happiness because I don't think you can just sit back on your ass and be happy I think like the humans kind of like humans are happy when they have power and self-determination and like are in control of their lives as soon as everything's handed to you you've lost all of that you've lost a say and you're, you're no longer a piece in the puzzle so I'm really conflicted about the technology the liberals like classically think technology is going to save everyone and I feel there's a lot of there's a lot of issues with that um, we need to retain our value I think and it's a very conservative idea um, at its core to and it's an extreme idea in this world now to, 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 to say that like you know we should not keep progressing and we should protect certain traditional values and maybe that's just me getting older but it's a scary world when you, I mean you see it like populations have just lost more the more technologies come into and the more convenience that's come in, the more jobs have been lost, the less valuable human beings are, and the less uh, the less money we have. It's no surprise that's reflected in the economies that you know that we now have to work longer to live because our our labour's been been replaced with autonomy and then automation, and it's just obvious that that's now reflected in economics. So. I don't know necessarily how we're going to retain our value because it's not abstract. Like value is not abstract. Value is very much like markets are not. Although they're tightly controlled, I don't think they're abstract. I think you see the scales balance on either side. Like when you're valuable to a society, like say for example now, like they'll say, oh, you need loads of it. There's, there's a shortage of electricians in in Australia because. Nobody wants to do these manual jobs or whatever necessarily, so there are not enough people. So the rate over there for an electrician is great compared to a country like India where they're ten a penny. Electricians are ten a penny because, because there's so much labour force here. And they also, that's, yeah, so it's... Um, it's not abstract, it's very clear that we need to retain our value, in my opinion. I've gone away from the idea of countries, I've just sort of been circling these different ideas that I've been thinking of. And this Hunger Games society that I'm seeing is clearly... You all know, you know, there's a road in Africa that runs right up the heart of it, where people are trying to get in to the West. People want access to the, to the wealth. They want access to the amenities and all of the things that have been built on the back of colonialism. And the gates are shut and they're willing to risk their lives on boats to get there. And not only that, on the way there's human traffickers picking them up, there's gangs, there's this brutal, they've got no money, they're just walking with the clothes on their back and their children tied to them. And this is Hunger Games society, you know, this segregation of, of humanity through all of these different economic kind of strategies because, again, we get our cheap clothes from Primark and we love it. Oh yeah, cheap clothes, brilliant, amazing, that's so good. There's some poor Chinese, poor Bangladeshi kids sweating buckets and bleeding over those clothes, you know? It's cheap because someone else had to pay the price. You know, that's not abstract, that's one plus one equals two. Uh, minus one equals one. And like, it's just, that's just how it is, so. I keep being confronted with this idea that we need, that the convenience is cost. There's no such thing as convenience. And once you get a lot of convenience, also you've lost value as a being. So what to do? I think it's an extreme idea, but I think the only way is to homestead at this point. The only thing is to commune, to live in communities and homestead and to take back control of food resource, but be, be, in, use initiative, you know, use technology as much as you can to, to increase yield, but have it hand to mouth, you know, like don't, you know, there should only be like maybe what, 20 families per, 
per community, or I don't know how this is going to work, but I just see this as the only way to move forward with the world. Um, technology to a degree, but there has to be a limit on how much it can devalue human value or devalue humanity. Um, we can't just become surplus to requirements because, yeah, that, that is just going to be dreadful. And I think we're already seeing it unfold, unfortunately, like Amazon, for example, have come in and decimated the high street. And people will say, oh, but you know, they've created all these online jobs and pools and sellers, but that's a centralised industry, and at the end of the day, they're still not paying the taxes that they should be. Um, so they've come in and decimated the high street. We've seen the formation of, uh, since this sub-matrix internet realm has kind of developed, now what we see is this um, whole new monopolization of services, Uber, uh, Deliveroo, um, Amazon, the supermarkets are doing delivery. Like not only is it a shut-in economy, economy, but it's a total monopoly. And no, everyone's sleeping on that, big time. You know, like all, all of the services. And we're like, oh, it's so good. You can just type in an app. And like, what's happened to us? Like, how did a generation just suddenly forget that you have to protect your industry? You know, like, it's funny. I think it's just, they've waited long enough for people just to be like, spellbound by the uh, convenience. I guess to summarise, countries are bullshit, states are large cults, um, international superpowers are not a war, They're, it's more like sport, there's rules of engagement and stuff like, when people say things like, oh America couldn't have faked the moon landing because you know Russia would have outed them, it's like well no, they also had a fake space program, and so China and so India, have you seen the videos of this shit, like their videos are ridiculous, like they wouldn't out them because it's a great way to extract public money into private contracts. Like that's just it's just a classic little con. It's so blatantly obvious. And yeah, you know, so that's that. They, those guys aren't at power. Colonialism has created like sectors where uh, some states work as like sweat states, and they uh, use their larger populations to uh, create uh, value, and then so that these sort of higher tier hunger game sectors can uh, have these sort of higher standards of living for their subjects. Now their subjects are kind of like still also uh, somewhat indentured, but it's almost like they've become kind of like, like the possessions of the state. So the queen's like, the queen would be like, oh, look at my, look at our subjects. Look how nicely they dress. Some of them even drive BMWs. It's like, we're just like, just accessories, like nicely dressed accessories, but we still have to go and fucking sweat and sweat and grind for these bastards. Um, so there's a Hunger Games kind of thing going on. Um, the control of trade, uh, trade monopoly. Yeah, like there's so many things that we're all sleeping on in terms of like retaining our value and sort of uh, having a having a. A, at least a few aces in our hands are used against any kind of tyranny. All of that's being eradicated and I think it leaves the door open for governments to um, just make this, it all comes down to numbers at the end of the day. Human lives are numbers at some, at some level and we should all understand that. I mean, you, it's naive to not understand that. Like, and if you look through history, there's nothing but, apparently there's nothing but war and bloodshed and yeah, the wild wars have just gone really just in a blink of an eye past and we are all, all of a sudden believing that the uh, upper echelons of society are benevolent and that they don't, you know, they want the greater good and they're just working in the best interests of everyone and I don't think it's the case. I think at that point they're just pragmatists and that then it's numbers on a page and they're, they're disassociated from the humans who are affected by it and then, and yeah. That's my bit. Ciao for now.